Hello, you're watching Sideline. Today we have got two guests in our studio, Vice President of JCI Mongolia, Mr. Inktilgir Inkbold, and Secretary General, Mr. Narambatar Atunchilam. So it's great to have you in our studio. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Thank you for us today. So the Junior Chamber International is a non-profit international non-governmental organization of young people. And this year it marks the 30th anniversary of the Mongolia's membership to JIC. So happy, uh, happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, uh, could you briefly explain to our audience what uh, JIC's mission is? And also, mm -hmm. I want to ask that what kind of benefits does it give to the members? Okay, thank you. So, uh, just to give you uh, general uh, information about JCI International Organization. JCI has been founded in 1915 in St. Mm -hmm. Louis, USA. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, now it's currently has membership in over 120 and 124 countries. And mm -hmm. Uh, one of it is Mongolia. Mongolia, JCI Mongolia has been founded in 1992. Um, and as you said, it's a very significant milestone year for us. Mm -hmm. And mission of JCI organization is to provide development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. Mm -hmm. Young so, people meaning yes. aged between 18 to 40 years old. Yes, that's correct. Yep. So in terms of uh, benefits and opportunities, uh, you know, um, all the JCI organizations around the globe, even local organizations, uh, we strive and uh, pursue to give four opportunities for our members. Mm -hmm. uh, one would be individual opportunity is for the individual development, personal development, mm -hmm. for a business opportunity for that's for business networking, business collaboration, uh -huh. um, international opportunity that's, you know, it's an international organization, so you can do also international networking as well and uh, the fourth benefit is the uh, uh, social benefit community benefit mm -hmm. which is uh, basically social responsibility benefit mm -hmm. if you want to give back to the society definitely you can do that through JCI organization yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, Narumbatar I'd like to ask you the uh, our structure of the organization so there mm -hmm. are in Mongolia mm -hmm. 1200 members and 400 senators and mm -hmm. also 1,000 supporters. So could you tell us what do each of the members and senators and supporters do at the GCI? Thank you for the question. So uh, JCI Mongolia has uh, 15 local uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, based now three cities, the main cities of Mongolia. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in UB we have uh, 12 chapters uh -huh. and we have two in Darhan and one in Erdenet. Okay. And just as you mentioned, uh, this year we have over 1,232 members in exact numbers. And our senators are those are who were an active members for at least three years. And then those who contributed to the organization uh, and uh, those who are above 40 becomes senators. Uh, so they're like the retired members. Yes. That would like to Pretty contribute like still that. to yeah. the we, we also call them as in uh, like lifetime membership mm -hmm. uh -huh. guarantee. Once you graduate uh, JCI, or when you once you, once you reach over forty, there's two categories of members. One is alumni, uh -huh. and the other one is senators. Senators, mm -hmm. it's as uh, and, uh, you know, Secretary General explained, it's the members that who has been active at least three years. So. They basically become a lifelong member, mm -hmm. a supporter of JCI organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. So senators are more active than the alumni. That's correct. Mm -hmm. They're more recognized and more active, and they also have their own certain structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what are the su uh, supporters? What do they do? So uh, we have different types of uh, supporters. So we can name it as an. Um, another NGOs or like another also the governmental organizations, ah, the organizations. and as ah. well as companies you mm -hmm. know so uh, within these uh, the framework JCI partners with uh, for example the in 2019 we mm -hmm. organized a campaign called a uh, one moment of patience one in moment. Mongolian Nick mm -hmm. so we uh, collaborated with the, the general authority of police department of mm -hmm. Mongolia, so probably our audience uh, aware of this campaign back mm -hmm. then. So we have such as many different uh, organizations we collaborate with. Mm -hmm. So those are also supporting our uh, activities in their own regards. Mm -hmm. The way we uh, collaborate with organizations is basically, um, you know, uh, in general, on annual basis, JCI Mongolia, through its also local chapter organizations we implement over well between 60 to 70 projects social social responsibility uh -huh. projects in Mongolia and 
So, um, so basically general approach how JCI organization implements those projects is to become the, uh, the connector, communicator, the, the uh, coordinator between the government, non-government and private sector mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to provide an everlasting positive impact in the community. It's not about like donating money or funds, mm -hmm. it's about finding the root cause and actually correcting the root cause by creating all these collaborations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. that's the general idea of, of the project implementation of JCI organization. So that's how we kind of, we choose our partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that there are 15 uh, chapter organizations in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. JCI has a great collaboration both uh, within its uh, organizations and also with other organizations mm -hmm. as we've talked about. So uh, to name more, JCI Mongolia uh, held uh, cooperation meeting with the JCI Vietnam mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. and also JCI is the only organization that can provide consultations to the United Nations and also mm -hmm. works uh, closely with UNICEF and UNESCO mm -hmm. so uh, could you elaborate on all mm -hmm. these uh, like uh, partnerships and cooperations how do you manage uh, these uh, organizations how many uh, partner organizations do you have Right. So, um, uh, you know, one of the big opportunities that JCI organization provides is the networking um, mm -hmm. and uh, collaboration opportunities. And uh, so we can collaborate, um, you know, with any of these 124 national organizations that's around the globe. Um, and as you mentioned, we had uh, recently a joint board meeting with uh, JCI Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, we have similar meetings with our, um, you know, um, closest uh, partners, uh, partnering countries like Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, um, you know, uh, Turkey, Russia. Uh, so with all those countries, we, we do um, regularly, at least twice a year, we do have uh, joint board meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to, um, you know, uh, uh, support each other in different projects and campaigns and also support each other on the membership networking and, um, and you know, to uh, to enhance the collaboration between the two countries. And uh, so, and you also mentioned about the uh, collaboration with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. uh, so inter on international level, there are several, several strategic partners that the JCI organization work with. One is the United Nations. Uh, another few is like, for example, uh, BNI, uh, ISAAC is another one. And there is a fourth one, uh, International uh, Chamber of Com Commerce. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. basically, um, it kind of goes back uh, to the history of JCI. For example, uh, in 1944-45, when the UN was about to be established after the Second World War, um, mm -hmm. um, so uh, they were considering several locations for their headquarter office. One was in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh -huh. One was in Manhattan, New York. And so as we all know, current headquarters is located in Manhattan, right? So at that time, the land was owned by a JCI member at that time. So the UN wanted to kind of buy the land from the from that uh, person, right, businessman, mm -hmm. and so he basically said, we c "I could I could give you the land, but in return, I need, I, I need two it. two things. Uh -huh. One is, um, I, I I would like to write to use your logo in the JCI logo, so you mm -hmm. could see the UN globe, a UN logo, mm -hmm. uh, a globe um, is also you can uh, see it in the JCI logo if you could see in it the in the background." The, well, it's inside that uh, ah. shield, you know, yeah, inside exactly. the shield, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there is a uh, globe uh, logo that you can see on the UN logo as mm -hmm. well. So and what's the second uh, part? Uh, of the second is uh, to become a partner organization to, uh -huh. to, to the UN. So we're the y only youth organization that has a consultation right uh, with UN. And mm -hmm. so as you know, UN, uh, they um, initiate these millennium um, uh, challenge goals uh -huh. or sustainable development goals, right? So, so you work um, with So we goals. basically mm -hmm. work as an uh, international arm to progress to move the SDGs forward mm -hmm. in all those countries. So, uh, so all these 60 to 70 projects that we implement on annual level, most of them are actually, uh, you know, um, is related to uh, progressing. Sustainable development goals. Yeah, with the SDGs, yes, correct, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so. thank you. So uh, G uh, JAC members are very busy, like collaborating and working and networking with all those That's people. Right. So we've talked about the benefits, like four benefits, the individual mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. international and community. So mm -hmm. uh, when you uh, recruit a new member, what do you require? from them, like what kind of uh, skills do they have to be uh, in order to become a member of GAC? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's a great question. So, uh, in according to our constitution, there's only two. There are only two requirements to be a member of JCI. Uh -huh. So one is to be the age. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. So the, the, those who want to be member should be aged between 18 to 40, mm -hmm. and the second one is a the guy must be active. Mm -hmm. Active. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how do you like? Uh, what is an active like person? How many mm -hmm. other uh, like activities, extracurricular activities, that, uh, does mm -hmm. that person have to mm -hmm. be involved? Right. So uh, actually, that requirement varies from chapters to chapters. Mm -hmm. It depends on the chapters' uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, for example, uh, some chapters require the members to be a higher or senior administrative level of a company, a manager or above. And some uh, chapters uh, just require to be a uh, active members, just like I mentioned mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So it really varies from chapters to chapter. Yeah. Okay. So I think lots of our audience who have uh, who have heard your answer are intrigued to become a member. <laughs> Thank you. So, so the uh, tenure of board members. So the members they can, if they're active and if they're successful, they can be part of the board members like you. Mm -hmm. So the tenure of most board members lasts for uh, a year, and then the next mm -hmm. year, they another mm -hmm. people will replace them. So uh, for this year, uh, you have got this motto to shine bright. Mm -hmm. And so, could you tell us uh, more of the like this year's uh, plan? Uh, what are you aiming to achieve uh, for the year 2022? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Let me uh, give a start. So um, that's a very interesting part. So JCI values uh, the democratic system. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have uh, each local and national organizations practice one year to lead self-governing system, uh -huh. and uh, members hold elections, mm -hmm. and those who are elected have a chance to lead for their own way mm -hmm. for one year. Uh -huh. Members right. cast their uh, like ballots, uh, not exactly. the senators. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. That's it. yeah. So uh, and it also uh, uh, brings uh, the value of democratic system mm -hmm. and also calls for the participation of youth for the elections for not only JCI but in uh, national levels as well. Mm -hmm. right. And um, so this year's plan. <laughs> uh, this year's plan, right? So uh, this year is a, a milestone year for us. So mm -hmm. we're celebrating our 30th year anniversary. So JCI Mongolia has a very big plan for throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So we have at least two to three events each month, uh -huh. right? And we will be celebrating our uh, anniversary on the 20th of August this year. 20th of August. And we will have a uh, delegates from uh, JCI headquarter mm -hmm. and another the other JCI national organizations and also we will have different uh, activities such as international golf tournament. Mm -hmm. So we'll have ah, participants from different uh -huh. countries. Mm -hmm. And also we're, uh, we're having a concert amongst our members, etc. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to have a business conference mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so various different activities around that uh, time. And I just want to kind of mention about the, our flagship projects actually for this year. The so mentor and mentee. Uh, uh, well, that's one of them and I, I, I can elaborate on that mm -hmm. as well. So there's four flagship projects that were implemented this year. One is uh, Save Angels project. It's uh -huh. about the reducing the mortality rate uh, of the infants. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is the One Community. It's uh, that a moment of patience was a social impact project together with the uh, you know general authorities of police. So that's uh, that project is being continued but focusing on different social mm -hmm. uh, issues, right? Mm -hmm. What kind so of social issues is well, it? Well, I mean, uh, this year I think uh, the local chapter who will be implementing that project is going to focus on the social bullying uh -huh. and against the social, uh, well, cyber social bullying. media, cyberbullying, uh -huh. cyber, cyber cyber bullying. Bullying and also um, um, internet crimes like, um, yeah, uh, web-based crimes, mm -hmm. you know. And the third one is Mentorship for RISE. So this year we are implementing that project as a flagship project because uh, we want to do it on international scale. So uh, it's actually going to be three different classes, but mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the uh, one of the classes is about um, you know supporting the young enterprising leaders of JCI Mongolia who actually has a startup business, mm -hmm. uh, you know who's trying to found his own business, uh, his or her business, and we're basically selected uh, thirty mentees uh, and from we actually your members well from uh, from JCI Mongolia members uh -huh. and. Um, and 
uh, we've also invited um, mentors for from 34 different countries actually mm -hmm. and uh, some of them are like um, uh, JCI officials, you know, JCI international officials, and some of them, most of them are uh, other 30 countries' national presidents, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, uh, we've successfully collected 34 mentors, actually, uh, from 34 different countries. So, uh, like in the recent, definitely in the recent JCI history, we haven't seen a, a project that kind of covered such a big... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, scale. Please. Yeah, so mm -hmm. definitely it's, uh, creating a buzz uh, about JCI Mongolia, about the country itself, right, mm -hmm. Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, on international scale. So um, definitely at least 34 countries will have a good understanding of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's the fourth one? Household project. Mm -hmm. Household. Um, it's basically all our 15 chapters, uh, local chapters, they are being responsible for one AMAC province, mm -hmm. AMAC, and so basically, we're focusing to supporting the uh, s small enterprises, like household enterprises, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. micro um, enterprises, to to help the local uh, economy, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our flagship project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For flagship project and also uh, other projects throughout the year. About the mentorship programs, uh, it said that there are three classes and one of exactly. uh, one is the for uh, startups and like businessmen who would like to have mentors uh, like international members uh, and could you elaborate on the other two classes of the program yeah sure so uh, the first class is towards our uh, recently joined JCI new members mm -hmm. so uh, the mentors will be a JCI experienced uh, old members, uh, members uh -huh. those who are having higher positions in JCI Mongolia and the local organizations. Mm -hmm. So one mentor should have one mentee. Exactly. Right. Uh -huh. So we have 30 mentees and 30 mentors. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, first class, we have total 60 participants. Mm -hmm. yeah. And another one? Yeah. And the uh, second class is uh, for those who are just recently graduated from universities and college mm -hmm. and starting just their career. So they, those uh, mentees will not only limit it to JCI members, it can be anyone. And the mentors will be uh, those who are, are successful in their career field mm -hmm. and those who are, uh, like we could call them influencers probably, right? Mm -hmm. So we also have 30 mentees and 30 mentors mm -hmm. for that class. So uh, it's been fantastic to hear all of this, uh, all of this uh, project and uh, missions. I would say that the reason that the GCI organizations are very uh, successful is mm -hmm. the concept of the GCI mm -hmm. organizations. Mm -hmm. And so could you elaborate on the uh, protocol and etiquette of mm -hmm. GCI? Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, as when I... I my belief about mm -hmm. JCI organization has been around for over a hundred years now um, around the globe, and um, so um, and um, so uh, foundation of that is definitely a organizational culture. That's mm -hmm. one thing, but what's driving that organizational culture is is the uh, constitution. You know, mm -hmm. constitution. We also. Uh, list our values. Uh, mm -hmm. There are six values um, that we list. We go by all the uh, founding values of the democratic U.S. Uh, you know values um, like free economy, mm -hmm. supporting diversity, democratic values, and whatnot. So all mm -hmm. those values are listed. And uh, talking about the etiquette and protocol is basically it's based on the international diplomatic protocol. So uh -huh. all the protocols are followed and. Um, uh, administered are basically uh, is adopted from the international, uh, you know, recognized um, diplomatic protocol. So the meeting protocol, the uh, the banquet protocol, dinner, whatever we wherever we go, we have to adhere by the protocol. Even how mm -hmm. we dress, like for example, we today have our tags. name tags mm -hmm. on the right, mm -hmm. our JCI pin on the left, and you have to have a uh, dark suit um, mm -hmm. in order to. Yeah, abide by the protocol. Mm -hmm. so. Smart clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, uh, Ichtelir Andy and mm -hmm. Larumbatar for coming to our studio and introducing us to your wonderful mm -hmm. GCI organization, GCI mm -hmm. Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us today yeah. again. You watch Sideline. Our today's guests were Larumbatar and Ichtelir from GCI Mongolia. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.